So, okay, with uh, the results deals with uh, romaine lettuce production, and this is a five-year study which was funded by uh, lettuce growers from Florida and, and Quebec. Okay, so what they are doing, these guys, they farm. They are the most important uh, uh, lettuce growers in the Everglades. Okay, so they where they, they farm 3,008 hectares in, in the Everglades. And they also own uh, 2,000 hectares in, in, in Quebec. So what they're doing is they're growing in, in the winter time. They're growing further, and then when this is too hot, they move all the equipment up north, okay, and then go in Quebec for the for the same duration. So they, they achieve this way a constant supply of lettuce uh, for their uh, uh, to their uh, main customers, okay. Uh, and these soils, well, you don't see them very well, but in both cases, they are mock soils. Okay? Uh, so this is 99% organic matter. Okay? About two meter, well, six feet, seven feet uh, deep. Okay? And uh, with properties, physical properties, that corresponds roughly to silk alone. Okay? So they have the same hydrodynamics. They, they, they have a lot of moisture in these soils. But at the same time, a lot of moisture is not available because it's sold by old plant remnants. Uh, so basically, uh, but they asked us to adjust the irrigation. They, they bought a whole network uh, for five large growers, bought whole networks of, of growths, okay? And, and uh, they have one irrigation specialist managing the irrigation. So they, they asked us, could you help us, you know, adjusting the equipment for this particular salt type because we know that results from mineral source might not totally apply for that. Okay, so that was our mandate to find that. Their main concern was really timber damage because uh, they realized at the beginning when we started this project, they had, uh, they had timber damages uh, causing losses for about 40% of their arms. So very important uh, damages to their crop due to timber. So timber is just as drowning of the margin of the leaves and it is associated uh, well, many references will say this is associated with, to, to calcium deficiency. Okay? Indeed, if you measure the plantation, there is a calcium deficiency building up here. You will measure it. But calcium is a, it is a nutrient moving with the water flow. Okay? So both process are, are interdependent. Okay? They act synergistically. Uh, so uh, we have we, one of the, uh, and in the region, whether this is in Florida or in Quebec, there is a part of the growing season in which the, there is a, uh, a hydric stress developing for most of the of the of the season. So uh, a lot of, one of the working hypotheses there is that uh, the uh, since uh, calcium moves with 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 the water flow, was that the a lot of the timber damage was due to uh, the, the fact that the water flow from the soil to the plant was not fast enough during high transpiration requirement. Okay. So that was the uh, <coughs> working hypothesis that we had to uh, work with. In the same time we had comparison study, I can tell you that we had treatments with calcium applications in order to try to control uh, tip burn, and indeed calcium is also one of the factors, but I won't talk about this, this factor. Both of them actually are synergistic. So you, have, you must have a proper water flow in order to control tip burn. So again, coming back to this blue line that we explained before, this is the tension that was observed as function of time at three different depths. Because in mock soils, that us will grow, will develop roots, okay, uh, at about two, growing at about one inch a day, okay. So uh, the uh, the roots will go down about three feet within 42 days. Okay? It grows very fast in these soils. Okay, so they monitor uh, tension at three different depths. <coughs> Uh, 6 inch, uh, 12 inch, and uh, 12, and this one is 18 uh, inches. Yeah. And these are the readings for the, uh, the uh, 15, the top surface, then the, uh, the 1 foot, and the 1.8 uh, uh, feet okay, uh, below the ground. So we can see the tension is in blue zone. This is a non irrigated treatment. They were one of the mandate was to check whether or not the, the crop need to be irrigated, and and uh, so the, the treatment was not irrigated. Despite that, the crop could maintain itself within the blue zone quite adequately. Then there was a, uh, a rainfall event occurring here, about uh, well two inch of, of rain here, two inches of rain, and then all of a sudden you had a drop, and the plant obviously was was getting bigger. 
and at some point we have started pit burn development. Eighty-five percent of the whole field is affected by pit burn, and it occurred at a point where the, uh, the top surface <coughs> the tension reached about seventy to eighty at the top surface, but it reached about twenty at the uh, at the tension at uh, one point well one point uh, five. Uh, feet uh, below the ground. Okay. So you can see here that the plant is picking up water from the uh, from the top surface, then the, the one foot, but it starts also picking up water from the uh, the 1.8, uh, 1.5 feet below. Okay. And timber developed at that stage. Okay. In that irrigated treatment here, we had 15% of timber, and what we could see was this rainfall, and then all of a sudden, as soon as this, uh, the um, the tension reached uh, 15, we initiated irrigation, then uh, tension dropped to be maintained within the, uh, the blue zone here. And we had only 15% of the difference. So there were two treatments in parallel, okay, one uh, with respect to the other. So now we calculated okay, <coughs> this, uh, this blue line here represents the crop ET for that period of time. Okay? for the whole duration of, of the stress. This represents when the plant experienced uh, tip burn symptom development in the non irrigated treatment. And this uh, black line here represents the uh, root uptake calculated from using the tension measurements, the sole physical properties, and we combine that in a model. Okay? And we simply calculate out what is the amount of water that the soil can supply to the crop. Okay? relative to its need. So you can see that here, if you maintain your attention in the, in the, uh, within the blue zone, then the crop ET will be met at most of the time by this period of time here. Uh, and the soil will be able to supply enough water to the crop. In the non-irrigated treatment, you can see that indeed the soil can uh, supply the water in adequate amount up to a certain time. And then when it drops below the crop ET, then the timber develops, and it develops very rapidly, within 24 hours. So <coughs> what we did, we, t we took, well, uh, we took the tension measurements, combined that into uh, models that were derived actually in, uh, here in Riverside, in California, by the group of Yuri uh, Simonek and uh, uh, Rhee and Baron Gillington, in which basically we try having the tension to predict what would occur as the, the crop is picking up water, as the lettuce is picking up water, at different depth in the profile. So at the uh, 6 inch, 12 inch, and 18 inches. So these values are predicted by the model, taking the initial uh, value of tension. And these are the observed. These dots represent the observed values. So normally, when the crop picks up water, what happened there is that it, it becomes to a certain threshold value at which basically the soil is not able, from top surface, is not able, able to supply enough water to the crop. So what happened then, there is a shift. The plant is starting to pick up water from lower in the profile, okay, at, at uh, lower depth in the profile. So that's what we can see here. This, this crop is starting to move. And then when it reaches a, uh, a value of about minus 200 centimeter or minus 20 centibars, then it started picking, picking up water from lower in the profile. Is it the way because the day and night? Uh, yes, day and night. What that, and that's, that's a good point. Well, we've observed that with greenhouse tomato too. There is a pool, during, there is a pool of, of water during the day, and then during the night, what is happening is there is a release of water to the soil. And, and uh, normally, it, sh it should drop there because uh, water is being extracted from the soil and then stay more or less constant. But then you've got several processes taking place. Redistribution of water from below, so capital rise. And then you've got the fact that also the plant is releasing water because some of the sugars which are produced in the roots mm -hmm. are transformed into starch. And then the osmotic potential is, is, is changed. And then the water flow is inverted. And we measured it. We measured it with greenhouse tomato. We measured it with lettuce. That's about 70 milliliter of water per plant that you can measure. So you, you, you see this, this fluctuation. We've seen it with potatoes too. Potatoes do that. Okay, so you can calculate. You've got tension, you've got a model. You calculate, okay, 
in in uh, in uh, black. What is the plant needs every hour? We can calculate that out, and this is represented by by these uh, dark lines here. And in gray, that's the soil supply. Uh, so if the soil is able to supply enough water to the crop based on tension and hydraulic properties of the soil. So we can see that here, both curves superimposed up to a certain point after 120 hours at which the adults, there is a mismatch. Meaning that at, at, at the critical tension, the soil is not able to supply enough water to the crop. So what, what is happening there is this mismatch. That's where, uh, when this mismatch occurs, this is where water starts being, being picked up from lower depth in the profile, and that's where tip burn develops. So a little bit of mismatch in the crop demand relative to the, uh, uh, relative to the overall requirements end up with tip bur burn symptoms developing in the crop. So as a comparison, uh, you've got a treatment here with 95% tip burn developing. So you can see here that there is a mismatch uh, later after maybe uh, 96 hours, that's about uh, four days. And in the, in the irrigated treatment here, there's a perfect match of the soil supply as function of time. And if you look at the tension that was maintained, in that zone, you're always between minus 10 and minus 20 kPa, okay? But for the, this other day, while in the other treatment, that is the beginning of this stress developing in the top surface uh, earlier in the season. And uh, so we simply summarize all these data. We had experiments for five years. We summarize because the growers ask us, okay, if I see a stress, how much time do, do, we, do I have to react? Should I react three days? Do I have three days, one day, two days? So we simply calculate out what is the amount of mismatch that the crop can face before the dropping dipper and symptoms. So this is the, the difference in mismatch in millimeter, and this is the tip burn incident. Very little tip burn if you've got a mismatch of five millimeter. Five millimeter, millimeter represents uh, something like, well, millimeter is... Uh, Almost a half. Half, uh, well. Quarter, a little or a quarter, like three eighths of an inch. Three eighths of an inch. 13 millimeters, half inch. And here, 10, one centimeter is half, half, 12 centimeter is half of an inch here, half of an inch. So at half of an inch of water deficit, you end up with 100% tipper, and, uh, and here you've got a quarter of an inch. So you've got very little room for mistake there. So that's why the, the, the growers simply move for, from a, a weekly schedule of water application to a real-time system because they, they understand that they have very little room here for reaction. And all these studies were conducted in their fields, so we've seen the results of that. But as a result, they came from 40% of, of timber damages in, in, in some drop years to about 10%. So that's why they were able to achieve a very significant reduction. In so uh, very high sensitivity to, to, to burning in public results in, in, in papers right now. So to summarize this, uh, this study, uh, we, we, uh, we end up with very frequent irrigation with small quantity we could, uh, being prescribed for tip burn damage uh, control. So that, that's why they end up with having a, an irrigation specialist essentially looking, looking at these alerts and yet reacting more and more in real time, but they saw benefits in it. So we turn the best in SSC. So that's all. Sorry, that was highly technical, but that's, I mean, that, that's research conducted with the growers that I think is, is uh, relevant, relevant to some of you. Cool. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.